I want to tell you a story most unlikely. A story of how a fatal crash saved eight lives. You see, an accident, however brutal and horrifying, is a miracle of sorts. If you're on the way to your execution. Meet the Liberated. Part one of this documentary chronicled the accident that granted these eight cows bound for slaughter a chance at life and their subsequent rescue. Now, in part two, you'll get to meet these survivors, each an individual in their own right. Iowa Farm Sanctuary co-founder Sean has been with the boys ever since that day we finally found them, shaken and terrified, and brought them to their forever home. So I thought it was only fitting to have her narrate their stories. Meet Max. Of all the survivors, Max had the most blatantly obvious injuries, bleeding from his nose, mouth, and right eye. Because of this, he was the first to go to the hospital, making the two hour journey the day after the accident. Given his painfully visible wounds and certain there was additional internal trauma, we were not optimistic about Max's future. The swelling around his eye was so intense that doctors were not able to perform scans until a few days after his arrival at the clinic when it had gone down enough. The scans revealed that Max sustained multiple fractures to his jaw and orbital bones, but due to his critical condition, he was not a candidate for surgery. Dehydrated and unable to eat, given the immense pain of his broken jaw, Max still remained trusting and gentle, quickly endearing himself with the veterinary staff who said he was like a really, really big dog. After a few weeks, Max was cleared to come home as long as we were able to administer his eye and pain medications. Due to the trauma he endured, Max's face is paralyzed, evidenced by his drooping ear and heavy tongue when he eats. We do not know what sort of, if any, vision he has in the right eye. I gave Max his name after the movie character Mad Max, who is always a survivor of very traumatic experiences. The pain and suffering our Max endured is undeniable. Yet he is the most loving, sweet, trusting, beautiful creature. His strength and forgiveness is admirable. Meet Tucker. You can immediately tell Tucker apart from his brothers because of his long, curly hair. After the accident, we noticed Tucker seemed to have some difficulty eating and some of his teeth were visibly crooked. At ISU, the doctors found some pretty substantial damage inside Tucker's mouth that would have to heal on its own. They informed us that over time, Tucker would likely lose the teeth knocked loose by the crash, but that miraculously, he'd not sustained any major injuries. Tucker was named by Chelsea Wilde in honor of her family. Now home at the sanctuary, Tucker tends to hang back, letting his brothers make sure that things are safe before he follows. Still as cautious as he is, Tucker will occasionally take treats from her hands. He's an incredibly gentle being, a temperament perfectly complemented by his soft, fluffy coat. Meet Charlie. In part one, Charlie's brothers protectively shielded him upon their arrival at the sanctuary. They knew what wasn't immediately apparent to us at the time. Charlie had sustained the most severe injuries of the group. Charlie was the only brown cow of the brothers. Aptly named by a longtime supporter and friend of Iowa Farm Sanctuary, who was at the scene of the accident. Well, it was obvious as he exited the trailer the day of the accident that Charlie's back leg was injured. We would have never guessed that he had sustained a shattered pelvis, a devastating injury for a cow. We made the two hour trip to bring Charlie and his brother Bromena to Iowa State University's large animal hospital. After x-raying Charlie, the veterinarian team informed us that due to the nature and extent of his injuries, there was no way to repair his fractures. Charlie was the first of the liberated to whom we were forced to say goodbye. We were able to find some solace only in the fact that he was able to experience being treated with love and kindness by human beings, however briefly so, before he passed. Meet Pramana, whom I had the honor of naming. Pramana is Sanskrit for by mistake or accidentally. It was perfect because he quite literally came into our lives by and due to an accident. Like Charlie, Bromena had obvious injuries to his back legs. Both were lacerated down to the bone. At ISU Large Animal Hospital, the doctors suspected that Bromena may have had a patch of dead bone in one of his legs, caused by an interruption of blood supply from a fracture. 
Before they were able to surgically remove the bone, an infection had spread to both legs. The ISU team explored every possible option to give Bremena a chance at having any quality of life. If only one leg had been injured, there may have been more options. But with two legs completely compromised, the veterinarians cautioned us to start preparing for the worst. Ten days after saying goodbye to Charlie, we had to say another tearful farewell to our dear Bremena. We certainly wish we could have known these sweet boys better. At the very least, they were able to pass with as much comfort, care, and love as possible. Meet Frank. Unlike some of his brothers, Frank's injuries were painfully obvious. His tail was completely severed during the accident and his lip was lacerated down to the bone. While the wound on what remained of his tail had begun to heal on its own, his lip required medical attention at the ISU clinic. The doctors drained an abscess on his jaw and assured us that he was healing well. Frank was named by my husband, Jared, short for the moniker Frank the Tank. Of all of his brothers, Frank is certainly the most cautious. Even a month and a half after the accident, he still wouldn't let us anywhere near him. And who could blame him given all he'd been through? We've respected Frank's boundaries, letting him set his own terms. Over time, he began allowing us to come within arm's length as long as we had his favorite treats on hand and has now graduated to accepting and relishing back rubs. Meet Cooper. Two days after the accident, after putting the other sanctuary residents to bed, I went to check on the liberated and thought that I'd found Cooper dead. As I got closer, I noticed he was still breathing, but it was incredibly labored. His eyes were rolled back and his stomach was bloated. I struggled with whether I should let him go peacefully or jostle him enough to make him fight. I decided to pick his head up and rest it in my lap, stroking his neck and comforting him in whatever decision he made. He chose to fight. He fought for the two-hour drive to ISU and for an agonizing month thereafter. Initially, Cooper had to have the inside toe of his back left leg amputated, and miraculously, he made it through the procedure. But while Cooper's surgical wound was healing, a large laceration on the other toe wasn't responding to antibiotics, and an x-ray revealed breakdown in the remaining bone. The veterinarians continued to monitor his status, but with Cooper's compromised mobility, the bone continued to deteriorate and the infection spread to his joint. We were given two options, amputate the other toe off of his hoof, which would require a prosthetic, or perform an operation that had never been done before, surgically inserting metal rods into Cooper's right leg above his ankle and building a cast extending past the bottom of his foot with a prosthetic hoof so that when he walked, he'd be putting weight on the rods and not his foot. With the doctor's guidance, we chose the second option. With amputation remaining a last resort, the vets also performed a bone graft of the compromised bone. Cooper made it through surgery and we were hopeful for his recovery. Two weeks later, when removing his cast, pus poured out from Cooper's leg. The vets found an infection where the bone graft was harvested and the scan showed the deterioration had progressed to other bones in his leg. We were told at this point his injuries were catastrophic. He was in immense pain despite the medication and there was no chance of recouping the damage that had been caused by the infection. He was not responding to the antibiotics due to an immunity buildup from all the antibiotics so-called food animals are fed throughout their abbreviated lives. Cooper suffered through, fought, and endured so much, even a surgery that no other bovine ever had. Yet after all of that, we lost him to an infection, an infection that should have been treatable. While Cooper escaped his fated slaughter that day on the highway, his life was still ultimately taken by our food industry. Meet Django. Decidedly the leader of the group, Django is usually found keeping watch over his brothers and is always the first to come running for food, water, and head rubs when he sees us. I call him Black Beauty. He's absolutely gorgeous with the deepest eyes, the cutest mop on his head, and always a swagger to his step. A couple who supports and visits IFS every chance they get named Django after a Quentin Tarantino movie centering around a freed slave in the American South because Django too is now free of the industry that bred, confined, and shipped him and his brothers off to their deaths. Meet Rocco. Unlike the rest of his brothers, Rocco somehow managed to survive the accident without sustaining any major injuries, and thus was the only one of the liberated who never visited the hospital. Over a period of a month and a half, Rocco watched his brothers be loaded into a trailer and taken away, some never to return. Rocco formed a tight bond with his brother Django, and while he didn't like it when we took anyone to ISU, 
the day we loaded his best friend into the trailer to join the remaining survivors at the hospital, Rocco began crying out so fiercely that we feared he'd take down our fencing trying to get to Django. We moved Rocco to a large stall, but upon arriving back home after a few hours, found that he'd busted his way out. When we finally brought Django home five days later, Rocco, who'd not been shy in displaying his displeasure with his brother's absence, began skipping and bucking around the pasture in the most beautiful, happy cow dance. Rocco, derived from Italian and Germanic elements, meaning rest, was named by IFS supporter Chris G. With his brother's home and Django stepping back into his leadership role, Rocco relaxed dramatically. He's still learning that some humans can be trusted, a lesson that would be understandably difficult to accept when all you've ever known from our species is fear, pain, and heartbreak. If it wasn't for that accident that day, these boys would have reached their intended destination as planned and been killed, bled out, and hacked apart. This fate is harder for us to stomach once we've learned their names and heard their stories. However, it's vital to realize that these eight are no more important than those not so fortunate. It is not our acknowledgement of their individuality that gives them value. They had value before the crash hurled their bodies into our path. They had value before they were given names. And the more than 822,000 cows whose trucks made it to the slaughterhouse that day, they too had value. They too had stories. They two were individuals. To support the life-saving efforts of IFS, visit iowafarmsanctuary.org. And to help Bite Size Vegan create more content like this, visit bitesizevegan.org support.